Hello everyone, my name is Jepna. Welcome to Springtime Stargazing. I'm a dome theater presenter here at the Discovery Center and what that means is I get to talk about space basically all day long. We're gonna go on a bit of a virtual tour of the night sky tonight. And we're gonna pick out some planets, some constellations, maybe even a galaxy or two. I do hope that you are nice and cozy. Feel free to grab some tea, some hot cocoa, whatever you need to get nice and comfy, and we'll dive right in. So today we're going to be using a free software called Stellarium to simulate our night sky. And it is such a good tool for really anybody to use if they want to plan a night of stargazing for themselves or if they just want the universe at their fingertips. There are a number of free phone apps as well, so if you are looking at that, would highly recommend. We're going to start things off quite simply with just a late evening sky. It's around 7 p.m. tonight. We're going to watch as our sun gets lower and lower in the sky as it sets in the west. You can see the beautiful reds and oranges and pinks as the sun sets, but also keep a close eye out for any bright objects that might appear. You may see two very bright ones looking like they're following close behind our sun. And keep an eye out for even some smaller dots of light. The very first star that you'll see will be over in the southwestern sky, so look for that SW and see if you can spot Sirius, the dog star. That is the brightest star in our night sky. It's about eight light years away. After Sirius, you'll slowly start to see those familiar belt stars of Orion, three bright stars in a row. We can even pick out his shoulders, his head, and even his knees. Now, if you use Orion's belt, join them together in a straight line in your mind, and then keep going to the right and you'll see Aldebaran. That is the eye of Taurus the bull. Now over the next few nights, see if you can spot these stars, Sirius, Orion, and Taurus. And maybe try to go out at the same time each night. What do you notice? Do you notice that they seem to be moving? They seem to have shifted where they were. They're getting lower and lower in the sky as the nights go on. And that's because these are winter stars. As the nights go on, we're not going to be seeing these stars in our evening sky. So while you still can, check them out. Now tangled up in the horns of Taurus are those bright blobs that we saw earlier. One of them is the moon. Now we may have to zoom in on it to actually see what phase it's in what its shape is. It is a crescent moon tonight. It's not the only crescent in our night sky though. Really close to it is Venus, the hottest planet in our solar system. Now to see the crescent of Venus, you will need some binoculars to see those horns. So both the moon and Venus show phases. They show, they don't actually change in shape though. What we're seeing is really different amounts of the lit up side of the moon and Venus as they continue on in their orbits, the moon around us and Venus around the sun. So over the next few nights, while maybe you're looking out for Orion and Taurus, look up at the moon as well. You won't need binoculars to see those phases. Notice how it's changing. Is it a waxing moon or a waning moon? When we come back down to Earth and look up at those stars once again, let's see what we can find for constellations. Our April sky is filled with animals. We've already found a bull. What else can we find? Now, high up in the southern sky is an animal that we sometimes call the king of the beasts. I'm wondering if you know what animal I'm talking about. It's a lion. So we're gonna find Leo the lion. If we look high up in the southern sky, we're gonna look out for a backwards question mark. And once we find it, we found the head of Leo and the bright star Regulus that we see there. 
is the heart of the line. Now when we draw out Leo with just the lines, it doesn't really look like a lion, does it? It looks a little bit more like a mouse or an iron. But if you want to imagine, we'll bring up the art and you'll see Leo roaring throughout the night sky. Now, Leo is home to one of my favorite deep sky objects. And a deep sky object is an object that is outside of our solar system, but isn't a star. This deep sky object is called the Leo triplet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look along that same line where Regulus is, the second star to its left. That is Chirthin. And we're gonna zoom in just below that star. And we'll see the Leo triplet as these three smudges in the sky. You can see them as these smudges with a small telescope or some pretty powerful binoculars. Since we do have Stellarium though, we're gonna go a little bit further and we're gonna see some pictures with a little bit more detail. These are some Hubble Space Telescope images of three spiral galaxies all in a group. The Leo triplet is about 35 million light years away from us. So we're looking at this group as it was 35 million years ago. Because of how close they are to each other, these three galaxies, there's M65, M66, and my favorite of the three, the Hamburger Galaxy. Because they're so close together, their gravity is warping their shapes. They're interacting with each other. And so you can imagine that they are gently pulling and tugging on one another. And we can see the signs that they're doing this in those shapes. They do look a little odd. And this is very common for galaxies. Because galaxies are like us, they like company. They tend to be in these groups. They will interact with each other. They will tug on one another. Sometimes they will even collide with one another and merge together to form bigger galaxies. Now, because of how common this is, we can see some pretty interesting shapes to galaxies out there. My favorite one is from the Atlas of Peculiar Galaxies called ARP 142. Look at it. It looks like a penguin guarding over its egg, doesn't it? And the penguin galaxy that we see here is really just a regular spiral galaxy. And that little egg is an elliptical galaxy. That egg is distorting and warping the shape of that spiral galaxy. And it makes it look like a penguin. Sometimes people also think it looks like a kiwi, even a porpoise. Now you can find ARP 142 in the constellation of Hydra, the serpent. And Hydra is just below our brave lion in the sky, right here. So now that we found our line and we found a serpent, there's one more springtime animal that we can find. And it is a tricky one because it is quite dim. Most of the stars in this constellation are quite faint. So if you're looking out at a night sky from the city, you're in for a bit of a challenge. But we can see just to the right of Leo and just above Hydra is a small little crab hiding called Cancer. So let's take a step back once again and look at those stars just as they are. We're gonna quickly move through time and we're gonna watch as those stars move from the east to the west. The stars aren't actually moving in this way. It's because we're spinning. The Earth is turning right now underneath your very feet. And because we don't feel that turn, to our eye, it looks as if the sky is moving. But there's one star that seems to stay put. It doesn't move in this way. I'm wondering if you know which one I'm talking about. The North Star or Polaris. So if we do a quick turnaround, 180 degrees, and look to the north, we can even look up high and spot the Big Dipper, that 
really famous group of seven bright stars that looks like a big spoon in the sky. We can use the Big Dipper to find the North Star. If we take the last two stars off of the bowl of our dipper, join them together in a straight line, and then extend that line until we find the next brightest star, there is Polaris, there is our North Star. Now, so if we keep looking north, here, still in view, we'll see a W in the sky, made up of five bright stars. And depending on the time of night, it might even look a little bit like an M, maybe a three, but this is Cassiopeia, the queen. You'll always find Cassiopeia in the Milky Way. That's that hazy band that we see stretching across the sky and is in fact our galaxy. It is where we live. This is a part of our galaxy, that hazy band. This is a part that curves around us up and over as we're sitting inside of it that lies along the disk. And it is the light of many, many stars. Our sun is just one of them. If we were to follow that hazy band, follow the Milky Way towards the southeastern sky, notice this very bright red star. It's called Antares. And it makes up the heart of the scorpion. Now, legend has it that this is the scorpion that ultimately defeated the greatest hunter in the world, Orion. And it's for that reason that you'll find it pretty hard to see Scorpius and Orion in the night sky at the same time. For one is a summer constellation and one is a winter constellation. The two of them are forever chasing after one another. Now, if you're not really a night owl, maybe you're more of a morning person and you like to be in bed, in jammies, fast asleep by 10 p.m., I understand, that is a respectable choice. But you still want to do some stargazing. Well, never fear. The morning sky for the next little while is a treat. You can find not one, not two, but three planets after 4 a.m. You can see the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. The other gas giant, second largest, and the ringed planet, Saturn. And if we keep going in that little line that they have made, we'll find little red Mars. So right now they make this really nice line in the sky. If you were to go out over the next few mornings, you'll notice that Mars seems to break away from that group. And you'll even notice that they're rising earlier and earlier. While you're on the hunt for these morning planets, why not try your hand at looking out for some fall constellations? And this might get a little tricky. These constellations will very quickly get lost in the glare of our sun. So be fast. You can actually use Cassiopeia that we found earlier to point to one of these fall constellations, the constellation Andromeda, the chained princess. And if we take the last two stars off of Cassiopeia, we can even find this little smudge in Andromeda. Now this smudge might not look like a whole lot of anything, but this is one of our closest neighbors out in space. This is a part of our group of galaxies. This is the Andromeda galaxy. And at about two and a half million light years away from us, it's the furthest thing that we can see with just the eye alone. Imagine that. Now, that is the collective light of hundreds of billions of stars that we're looking at. And each of those stars, they might have their own planets orbiting around them, and who knows? Maybe, just maybe, there could be someone there looking out at their own sky with the same wonder and curiosity that we have. And my friends, the sun is steadily rising. These stars, the planets, they're all lost now in the glare of it. Here comes the sun. We end our show with the promise of a brand new day, the endless possibilities of tomorrow. I really do hope that you will take a chance and see what you can find in the sky for yourselves. Take care.